Hello and welcome to our fourth live stream of today for Discover LC, our virtual online open event. Uh, we're rounding up our last curriculum area now and we are heading over to Uniform Public Services to talk all things through level one all the way through to year two. So let me let me introduce you to our team who are going to be answering all the questions. If you do have any questions throughout the stream, just pop them in the comments below and we'll, we'll make sure that we answer those. Um, but let me introduce you to our, our wonderful team. We've got Dave. Hi, Dave. Hi, Ashton. How are you? Yeah, I'm not too bad, thank you. How are you? Yeah, I'm well, thank you. Good. Do you want to tell us sort of a little bit about yourself and your time at the college? Uh, yeah, um, I've been here now for around about eight years. Um, I'm the programme lead for Level 1 and Level 2 Public Services course. Um, prior to that, um, I was in the British Army for 22 years. I served as a military policeman and uh, retired in 2010 um, as a Sergeant Major. So. Um, when I'm teaching on the on the course, um, I'm bringing real life experiences uh, into the classroom, and um, I really enjoy that aspect of being able to relate what I'm teaching to the experiences that I've had in the past. Fantastic, thank you. And we also have Mark. Hi, Mark. Good afternoon. How are you? Yeah, not too bad, thank you. Enjoying it's nice. The sun's come out now on Saturday afternoon, which is nice. Yep. Yeah, do you want to tell us a little about yourself as well? Okay, so my name's um, Mark Burns. Uh, I, uh, like Dave, I'm a programme lead, um, but my um, area is the Level 3 uh, courses, so Year 1 and Year 2 of Level 3. Um, my background is slightly different to uh, Dave's. I've worked at the college now for about four and a half years. Um, I came here from a sixth form college. Um, my background is that I was in the police for 30 years. I retired ooh, all the way back in 2012 now, so it's been a while. Um, I worked in a variety of roles in the um, within the police as a response officer, driving fast cars and doing lots of exciting things. I also worked for the Youth Offending Service as a seconded officer, working with young people offended and looking at the reasons why they offended. So my background is more in sociology, criminology, and they're the areas that I tend to teach across all of our courses, really. Fantastic, thank you. Um, could you talk to us a little bit about, you know, what does Uniform Public Services cover? What can students expect to learn while on the courses? Do you want to oh, go no. <laughs> Um, well, the, um, the courses are separated down into uh, different units. Um, so depending on whether the students are studying at level one, two or three, um, will very much depend on the units they study. Um, but the focus is always on the public services generically. We, uh, uh, while some of the units are specific to certain public services, particularly uh, the police and law enforcement. Um, otherwise, it's very much along the lines of um, leadership and teamwork. There are um, adventurous activities that, uh, that are involved. Um, there's an element of physical fitness. Um, there's elements of discipline. We all wear a uniform. We all, um, under normal circumstances, we all parade every morning uh, where I conduct an inspection, making sure everybody is dressed appropriately. Um, we have a code of conduct, um, very similar to what you'd find in any of the public services, where uh, we have a certain standard of uh, dress and behaviour, etc., that uh, mirror what is required in the public services. Um, so it's a very, very broad uh, uh, range of, um, of subjects and activities that the students will be studying, regardless of what level it is. It's not all sat in the classroom and it's not all just studying the same subject every day. Uh, there's different teachers, different subjects, um, different activities. So it's very varied um, and we like to think it's very interesting as well as being very challenging. Fantastic, cool. Anything to add, Mark? Yeah, um, where you start on your course uh, will depend on your uh, qualifications that you've done during your time at school, uh, GCSEs. So, um, we teach all levels from level one, um, which is pre-GCSE, level two, which is GCSE level, and level three, which is uh, equivalent to A-level. Um, and as Dave said, it's a mix of practical units, uh, theoretical units, 
in general terms, the higher uh, the level that you are studying, the more academic the t course tends to become. So um, I would say that about 50% of level one is practical subjects, uh, about the same on level two, and then it goes up, um, or sorry, in terms of academic content um, and theor theoretical units as you get into level three. So there is a progression uh, which um, should reflect your um, increase in academic ability. Cool. And just sort of, you know, to play devil's advocate a bit, why do students have to do those theoretical modules? What benefit do the students get from that? Well, I think it's about recognising that all students uh, have a different starting point. Uh, they also have very different end goals. Our courses are not so much about definitely giving someone a job let's just say sometimes they can be about showing people what life is in a public service and if you do that um you have to have an understanding of the theories behind why we're doing things you know it's not it's not um the, the particularly i mean i speak more from the policing background but the police don't want people who are just robotic and just do it because they've been told to do it they need to understand why they're being asked to do a certain thing or why it's certain things happen in a certain way so certainly the theory behind uh, a lot of what, what we do underpins the practical applications and you have to have both um you know this is a very uh, different world that we live in now than say even 20 years ago so certainly understanding uh, what's required has become much more theoretical now fantastic thank you um so with this course is there any exams that students are required to complete in order to to finish the courses and pass them yeah um, um in level two for instance, there are two exams. They take place um, in, uh, in, during the, the second half of the second semester of the course. Um, and we're now moving into a, a, a new level three course where there, where there are also um, exam units. Um, so some of the, um, some of the um, assessments are done by us in the college. Um, but some are done via um, via exams. But as I said, that's, that's level two and level three. Of course, cool. so there's no exams on the level one course. Mm -hmm. Is it all sort of coursework assessed, or is there what's the assessment? Yeah, um, the, well, the, it very much depends on the unit that they're studying. Mm. Um, yes, sometimes there are um, assessments in, in um, assignments or presentations and uh, things of that nature. Um, sometimes there'll be role plays um, or practical assessments where students are required to demonstrate that they know how to do something or um, that sort of thing. Um, so the the assessments are very much along the lines of, of what the unit is about. Um, I mean, I'll give you just one example from the level one course where they uh, they have to search a person and search a premises. Um, so they learn all the, uh, the, the theoretical side behind it um, and then they have to demonstrate um, by means of an assessment that they can actually do it and uh, and that's the case in a lot of the units um, that, uh, that are involved where you know you learn all about it and then you're assessed in whatever way um, is most appropriate really. Mm -hmm. Fantastic, cool. Um, so, you know, obviously right now, I think everything's a little bit up in the air with timetabling and whether we're back in September or not. But typically, saying it's the last year, what, what would a student's week look like? How often would they be in college? Again, that depends on the levels. Um, if you are level one or level two, for example, um, it's highly likely that you'll be doing GCSE maths and English uh, if you haven't already um, uh, uh, achieved a grade four, um, you'll have to do additional maths and English as well as your course. So in general terms, most courses uh, are between two and a half and three days plus your maths and English. But these are full-time courses and we do set assignment work. We do set work um, 
research, um, prep work, um, which is expected to be done mm -hmm. at the same at, at the same time as all your other work. You're supposed to do that from home, though. You're supposed to use all of your time during a typical Monday to Friday week um, to make sure that you're on top of all your assignments. There isn't enough time in the two and a half days that we're in to do all the assignment work as well. So it is a full time course. You know, quite a few students make the mistake of thinking, well, I'm only in two and a half days. So that's an extra day in bed or an extra day at work or an extra day doing whatever. And they get themselves uh, into a little bit of difficulty with time management and uh, meeting deadlines as a result of um, not being prepared for a full time course. So it's important to balance your week in terms of work from home and college work. School. Yes. Um, is that the same for the level one and two courses, Dave? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, well, say uh, the students, as Mark explained, will be in for you know two, two and a half, three days, and then they've got uh, English and maths on top of that. Um, there's there's an awful lot of coursework that the students have to complete in their own time, um, and it involves them organising themselves and making sure that they meet the deadlines that have been set. Um, so that can be a challenge in itself because um, when you're not at college, the temptation is to do other things, whereas actually you haven't got the time to do those other things. You've got to be completely um, you know, using your time very constructively to complete your coursework um, and to meet the deadlines that we set. Fantastic, cool. Um, so on a lot of our courses, there's work experience and placement opportunities for students. Is that the same with the UPS courses? Um, well, we, there's two things here. Um, firstly, um, you know, work experience is not usually an opportunity. We, you know, we can't send people out on a, on a battleship for six months <laughs> yeah. like that. Um, so um, what, we, what we expect is the students to, uh, to um, uh, complete voluntary, voluntary work um, that is in some way connected to the public services, whether it's interacting with the public or providing a service that the public needs, something along those lines. And of course, also, if um, students are um, cadets, for instance, then that counts towards those, uh, those hours. Um, and we won't run various programmes uh, within the college, um, one being for level ones, there's a, a, something called the World of Work, where they are um, learning about what it is to to work and what's required of them. Um, so that goes towards those hours. Uh, level two, we have been um, the last couple of years working with the NCS program, National Citizenship Scheme, and again that fulfills that requirement. Um, so there's various um, options open. We have a, the, the students have a lot of um, contact with um, people who are in the public services, either us visiting them or them coming to the college. So they get a lot of good ideas about what it is to actually be in the public services, whichever one it might be. Um, so whilst it's not wholly you know, work experience, and probably a lot of people would recognise it, um, there is a requirement there to go above and beyond just the coursework. Fantastic. And that's the same for level three as well, Mark? Yeah, exactly the same. Fantastic. Cool. Um, so you mentioned earlier on that it's important that students are in uniform um, during the course. So what kit and what uniform is it that they have to buy? So we have a, um, we have a uniform supplier. Uh, they're provided with a link to the website. Um, if they are entitled to um, bursary, and that's dependent on family income, uh, everybody's different, um, but if you're in a reduced circumstances where your family income is is reduced, um, then the college does support um, the purchasing of uniform. But in general terms, you go onto this website, um, you click and order the kit. It it sells you every single piece of kit that you need for. Um, for your course and it does it all as a package uh, in your package you get a pair of boots you get uh, a pair of trousers you get two polo shirts you get a soft shell jacket you get um a um, pt shirt and then um 
you give the website your sizes and they send it direct to your home. It's fairly straightforward. Uh, the only painful bit is that the whole thing costs uh, £137 uh, and some pence, um, 95 I believe. Uh, that includes your postage, your package, your VAT. Um, the pair of boots themselves um, are really good quality boots. We do take students out walking in um, in the hills, so they do need proper walking boots, and these boots fulfil that requirement. So they are a good investment, and they will be suitable for every activity that we can think to throw at you during the course of um, your year or two years with us. Fantastic. And is that the same kit for level one and two as well, Dave? Yeah. Yes, yeah. Um, the uniform is exactly the same. Um, doesn't matter what level the students are studying at. Um, they, there's no um, overnight um, camping with the level one course. Um, and really, they, uh, level one students will need an awful lot more on top of the uniform, you know, perhaps some you know, a bit more warm weather clothing and uh, uh, waterproof clothing when uh, they are required to do some walking. Um, but level two, they'd certainly need, they, they do know an overnight camp, so um, they would need um, whatever they require um, to complete that overnight camping um, expedition. Cool. And what, what's your opinion on glamping? What kind of, what's that kind of vibe for you? Is that a, no? Okay. Right, so I, I shouldn't come on the overnight expedition then, kids. My no. only version of camping is glamping. So. We, we, um, we tend to um, keep things quite basic. Um, the students who do go on an expedition have to carry every single piece of kit uh, that they it's a requirement of of the units that they do but they have to carry every single piece of kit that they are going to need for the two days or the three days that they're out in the field um and when they're not sleeping in it they're walking with it on their backs so um yeah quite basic you can't take several tins of beans um <laughs> because they're quite heavy and they tend to dig in when you're trying to pack them into your rucksack. Um, so um, it is quite basic. They are um, expected to do that independently as well. Um, it's very similar to a Duke of Edinburgh expedition um, in, in its objectives. Um, but it's great for building uh, confidence, personal confidence, teamwork, um and just sort of that sense of satisfaction of doing something that you've probably and for a lot of our students probably never um experienced before so mm. it's quite interesting cool i did my bronze dv when i was younger and i always got like kidnapped by a herd of sheep and i vowed never <laughs> to do an expedition ever again so um not to be a stereotypical girl there but it's definitely not for me um <laughs> another sort of question sort of moving on to like post course post expedition everything what kind of careers can students expect to go into i know we mentioned obviously the police and that kind of thing but what kind of career pathways can they go on to i think it's important to say that we don't guarantee a specific job just by completing our courses certainly the police are moving away and are going into much more academic qualifications now but our students are, are applying and being accepted onto the uh, higher level apprenticeship schemes um, that are starting you'll see a lot more of now just an interesting aside i, I was um somebody posted onto my social media, a link to a photograph that was taken of the very first class that I taught 12 years ago. And a conversation developed around where some of those people were now, bearing in mind they're all 30 now. Um, they're in some really, really interesting and exciting roles from disaster management to uh, a couple are in the police, Several have gone into the armed forces. Um, so of that old class, I would say about 
60% of them are still working in some form of public service job, uh, but the variety that that is out there that this course can lead on to is phenomenal. Um, and one of the other things, um, as I alluded to earlier, is it gives you a realistic idea of what life in a public service is going to be like. And for some of our students, they actually, after they've studied for a year or two, think, actually, I might not be cut out for this and that's it's as important to find that out about yourself as it is to find out what you can do so it's a very difficult question to answer and tracking where students get to and what they progress on to is not an exact science and most of most of what we know is anecdotal yeah but what, what I'm hearing is there is quite a lot of progression routes that students can take from this course. It does lead them into sort of a lot of different. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we've had uh, experiences before where um, you know, students have, have left and uh, gone and done a job, whatever it might be. Uh, and then later on, I think, you know, perhaps that career in, the, in, in a public service is, is good for me. Um, mm -hmm. And then go, go ahead and do that. Um, and look back on the experiences that they had on the course and think, you know, that that will make sense now. And I realised why we had to do that, why we had to know about that, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. So it might not just, you know, immediately, oh, you know, finish the course, go and join the Navy, the Army, the Air Force, whatever. Um, it sometimes takes a while. And, you know, bearing in mind that a student um, joins us at 16, does a year or two, they're going to leave at 17, 18, they've still got an awful lot of time ahead to make a uh, to make a decision on what they want to do i often mm -hmm. um when i um, go to the remembrance um at um at, at victoria park you know there's a lot of times i've, I've bumped into ex-students um and um it, it never ceases to surprise me what they what they get into um you know, what, when i met last year is now a restaurant manager um one who left um uh, a few years ago, um, it's now gone into the RAF. Um, I've, I've met a couple of others who've, uh, who've gone into um, um, into other armed forces. So, you know, it's, it's not a question of you know, okay, finish the course, go and do something. Um, you know, it can be a, it can be a process that, that, that students go through, dependent upon the individual. Hmm. So, what um, you know, going into those progressive like public services, like policing and like the arms forces, let's just sort of focus on, on that progression route. Is there another qualification that students have to do after this to enable them to go and join those courses? Um, yeah, oh yeah. I mean, it's not, you know, it's not so much a qualification, it's more of a, a, a case of, you know, they've got to go and do the training. Um, you know, our, our course going to equip them, equip, them, equip them for that, but it will give them an idea of, yeah, the sort of standards that, that the public services require of their people, um, which a lot of students don't have any awareness of. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's well worth them taking on board the lessons, not just from the from the, the qualification from their academic studies, but also yeah, the experience that we that we in the team have had that we can pass on to them and give them a good um, a good idea, a good basis for when they actually join one of the public services. Yeah, cool. Perfect. Um, so what are the entry requirements for the courses all the way from level one to, to level three? That depends really on, uh, yeah, so level one, um, you need to have, um, well, basically the level one, the, the level one starting point is two GCSEs um, at two, um, but um, quite a few students who come to us, um, especially given the demographic of, of, of our uh, college, have maybe not been in the country uh, long enough to have gone through a GCSE programme. Um, so it, it, it's all dependent on um, their level of qualification. So two GCSEs, uh, hopefully maths and English, at two at level one level two is um four gcse's maths and english being two of the four at three um and then level um three is gcse's in maths and english plus three others so five in total uh at level 
four, grade four. Um, very, very, very similar to A level minimum uh, entry requirements for A level courses at a sixth form college or if you stay on in school. So um, we won't, and, that, and that's part of the difficulty because people that are applying are applying using their predicted grades. We can't actually place them on a course until the grades are published um, in mid August. So it doesn't give us a great deal of time to plan and prepare the courses um, because we're waiting for the grades. Majority oh. of people get the grades they want. Yeah. So we're sort of moving on to the last couple questions now. But if you are watching at home and do you have any specific questions, feel free to put them in the comments now. Um, so you're saying, you know, to get to level three, you need a certain amount of GCSEs. Will students be able to go straight from GCC into level three or do they need to have done a level one or a two course to get into the level three course? No, if they, ha if they have the required grades, then they go straight to, to that level. Uh, and having said that, um, we have students who start at um, level one and then progress up um, to level two and level three. Likewise, students who start level two progress to level three and the second year level three. So, um, you know, it, it's, it's very much down to, to the individual student. We will start them at an appropriate level dependent on the GCSEs and, and the grades that they, uh, that they achieve. But if they wish to progress, um, uh, through our courses, then that opportunity is is there as well. Fantastic. Um, so nowadays, the police require students to have a degree in order to to become a police officer. Um, so, what are sort of the university degrees that this can lead to? What sort of relevant degrees to this course can students go on and do after they finish the course? Well, we've just um, we've just um, finished twenty. Um, students who've just completed their extended diploma, which is the equivalent of three A levels. Mm -hmm. um, of those, eight, I think, or nine are going into university. They will be studying a whole range of courses, um, all the way from um, fire and rescue, uh, disaster management's quite a popular one. Um, criminology psychology um and there are several students who applied for the direct entry um high level apprenticeship with the police which yeah. um is basically your basic two years training which is done through um de montfort and in leicestershire anyway um and your basic qualification with that is a foundation degree in policing um, you need the level three qualification to be able to get onto that. So, um, in terms of uh, progression, you know, getting a level three in public services is a major stepping stone if you're interested in a career in the police. We work quite closely with um, police recruiting, looking at those students who maybe don't meet the entry requirements to come on the um, the um, high level apprenticeship. Uh, and looking at routes into a course where they can get the grades that they require to go on to the high level apprenticeship. So it is quite an important stepping stone to a career in the police because you can no longer um, have GCSE qualifications and go straight into the police anymore. That's that's not a valid route. So that's that's a big change there now. Yeah, yeah. Cool, perfect. So we're sort of wrapping up into the last couple of questions now. Um, but when students apply, do they need to do an interview or anything, or is it just the application that they need to fill in? No, um, it's, it's, it is purely the, uh, um, the application. Um, students um, should have uh, been to one of our uh, welcome events, um, although obviously with things as they are at the moment, it's understood that that might not have been possible. Um, and um, at uh, as we speak at this present moment in time, um, our induction might very, uh, very well be done um, remotely um, unless things change prior to September. Um, so really, it's a question of applying, uh, um, going through that process. Um, and I have to say as soon as possible, um, because our courses do fill up. 
and we have you know, limitations as to how many um, classes at each level we can uh, we can actually teach. Cool, fantastic. And how can students go about applying for the courses? Can I apply directly online. Um, quite a few students uh, would have applied through their school's uh, careers system, um, but there is a direct application route. You can go online, um, download the uh, online application form, fill it in, uh, and then um, our um, our careers team will do the rest. They're, they're all set up uh, and have been working for three months now remotely, so um, it's a fairly seamless process once you fill the application form in. Cool, fantastic. Thank you guys very much. That's all the all the questions we have. Um, so if there is sort of one little bit of advice that you'd give to students who are looking at coming in September, maybe like what to do over the summer to prepare themselves, what, what kind of thing would you say? Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's yeah. it? Cool. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's yeah. We, we we try and help students to either maintain or improve their fitness. Um, but I've got to say, a lot of them do struggle with the fitness element. And um, yeah, yeah, do some do some walking, do some running, and perhaps most importantly, do some press ups. <laughs> so stop putting it off. Start those press ups. Right, got it. I'll take yeah. note. I'll I'll start doing my press ups today, and hopefully by September I'll be a bit fitter. Um, cool. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us. It's been fantastic. And hopefully those watching at home have found it really helpful as well. Um, if you do have any questions and you're or you're watching this later or you think of one a little bit later on, just message us on Facebook or Instagram or email us at info at lessercollege.ac.uk. We'll try and answer all those questions for you. And um, but for now, hopefully we'll see you in September. Um, but if not, we'll see you as close to September as possible. We're back at four o'clock with an applying to Leicester College stream. So if you have any questions about implying or enrollment or anything, join us a little bit later on for that. Okay. All right. Well, thanks very much, guys. And we'll, we'll see you very soon. All right.